In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to simplifying square roots. So we're only focusing on square roots, which means we're just going to see a radical with no index. It's assumed the index is 2. Uh, before we get started on that, what's going to be really helpful for simplifying square roots is to uh, talk about just a few of the perfect squares. So a perfect square is a number that has rational roots. There are infinitely many perfect squares. The ones that we tend to focus on are the ones that are the squares of the first 10 or so counting numbers. So I just want to put those, I'm going to make a list here so that we can refer back to them. Um, the square root of 1, we don't really care about it, but, but 1 is a perfect square, so we should probably write it. Uh, the square root of 1 is 1, because 1 times 1 is equal to 1. The next perfect square is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. The next perfect square is 9, which has a root of 3. After that, we have 16. 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144. Let's be careful there. And then I could keep going, but the board just ran out, so I'm going to just focus on these, but again, there are infinitely many others and there are more beyond 144. Okay, so that's the, the list of just a few of the perfect squares that we want to keep in mind. The next thing we might need to do uh, is define what does it mean to simplify a square root? So we say that a square root is simplified If there are no, there are no perfect square factors, except for one, under the radical. So to reiterate this, if we're going to simplify a square root, that means uh, that there are no perfect square factors left under the radical. So we're, what we're looking for are factors of 4, 9, 16, 25, because if those are under the radical, we want to actually take those square roots because we can, and then we write it as a little multiplication expression. Um, obviously, we're never going to be able to take one out from anything because it's always going to be stuck there as a factor of everything, so we just ignore one. All right, a good rule of thumb, just something to keep in mind when we're, when we're looking at this. If we assume that if we're given a variable, that the variable is positive. And sometimes you're going to see that written in the instructions. You can say, assume all variables are positive. When it says that, that's good news, because we don't have to worry about any weird special cases. If it doesn't say that, then you need to be careful. But for now, we're going to assume that it is positive. So if x is positive, so if x is greater than 0, then we can say then the square root of x squared is equal to x. So what's nice there, the, the square root of x squared is equal to x. So the square and the square root, they are inverse operations and they cancel each other out usually. Well, not usually, when x is positive. Um, so they kind of, they, they undo each other. Um, and we can put this to the test. So if we have the square root of 2 squared, well, 2 squared is 4 and the square root of 4 is 2. So if you want to, you can skip a step. If this, help, if this is helpful, great. If it's not, don't worry. We don't actually, you don't have to use this. There are other alternate strategies. Okay, so now let's look at some examples of simplifying radicals. And first we're going to look at simplifying the negative square root of 144. So we want to ask ourselves, is 144 a perfect square? And the answer is surprisingly yes. Yes, it is. Um, the square root of 144 is 12. We want the negative root, so we would say negative 12. Next, we're going to look at the square root of negative 81. So is negative 81 a perfect square? Wait, we have a problem here. This is a negative, so we're saying let's find a number and multiply it to itself, and the result, the product, is something negative? No, math and mathematics and real numbers, if you multiply two things, they have to be either positive or zero. So this is not a real number. For now, we can just say no real number. If you know the imaginary root, you can write the imaginary root and yay for you. But for now, we're just going to say no real number. All right, next, how about the square root of 16? 
is 16 a perfect square? I consult my list and I see, yes, it is. The square root of 16 is 4. So these are actually evaluating radicals. We haven't had to worry about simplifying yet. Let's look at one where we do have to simplify. So letter D, we want to simplify the square root of 108. So 108 does not appear on my list. It looks like it's in between 10 and 11, which isn't that helpful. What we're looking for then, if we're going to simplify it, is we're going to find a perfect square factor. So 108, let's we'll start with some of these bigger numbers. Um, does 64 go into 108? You can check with your calculator. No, it doesn't. Does 49 go evenly into 108? No. How about 36? And the answer is yes, 100, uh, 36 does. So what we can do is we can rewrite the square root of 108 is the square root of 36 times 3. So if we divide 108 by 36, we get 3. How does this help us? Well, here's a perfect square factor. We can separate this and say, OK, the square root of 36 times the square root of 3. The square root of 36, we can actually take that. That's 6. The square root of 3 is irrational. We leave it under the radical. So the square root of 108 is equivalent to 6 times radical 3. Let's try another example. How about the square root of 80, uh, DE? So the square root of 80. 80 itself does not appear on my list of perfect squares. Oh, it's so close, though. It's so. Can we just say 9? No. No, we can't. OK, so we're going to have to simplify it. We're looking for a perfect square factor that goes into 80. Uh, the, the largest perfect square factor will be 16. We can rewrite 80 as the square root of 16 times 5. And then we can separate these, the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. We can take the square root of 16, which is 4. 5 is stuck under the radical. It is not a perfect square. Something that does happen frequently that I just want to bring to your attention in case uh, you happen to, to do, uh, I don't want to say it's incorrect because it's not incorrect. It's just an extra step in case you want to do a little bit more work. Sometimes we look at the square root of 80 and we're like, oh, 4 goes into 80. And that's true. 4 does go into 80, and it's on my, my good list of perfect squares. Well, so what happens if instead of using 16, we use 4? This would be 4 times 20. That would be 4 times the square root of 20. And then the square root of 4 is 2, so we would end up with 2 radical 20. Wait, that doesn't look like that, so is this wrong? It's not wrong, but 20 still has a perfect square factor. 20 is divisible by 4 as well. So we're just, we're not done yet. What you would have to do is you would have to repeat the process of simplifying the radical. The coefficient, the 2, you just kind of keep bringing it over. It's not affected when you're simplifying this piece of it. So we would say, okay, I can rewrite 20 as 4 times 5. That's 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Then I end up with 2 and then another 2. This is all multiplication, so it's 2 times 2 times radical 5. That gives us 4 radical 5, which does match the simplification there. So if you don't think of the largest absolute value and you, you come up with a different one, you just want to check your radical and make sure that there's not another perfect square factor that's still stuck under there. We want to make sure it's completely simplified.